what happens is, I mean, when you sell, you get a lot of money, mm-hmm. uh, right? That gives you freedom. Uh, and that things. freedom is so precious. Yeah. And at that age, yeah. right? I mean, it's like by the time my friends are getting on to like working, <laughs> you have exited working, right? <laughs> yes. I mean, the rest of your life is yeah. a holiday. Welcome back to another episode of Wits and Pieces. My name is Noah Martins. This is Ryan Doshi. And with us today, we have a very special guest. We have with us the co-founder of Redbus, which is a company that most people have used, or at least know of for sure, Mr. Fanindra Sama. And he's also currently the Chief Innovation Officer of the state of Telangana. Thank you so much, sir, for doing Thank this with us Thank here you. today. Yeah. Uh, so let's start by talking about let's let's start with Red Bus. How how did that happen? How do you come up with it, and what was that like? Yeah. So uh, we started Red Bus in 2005, so, okay, uh, Diwali of 2005. So okay. graduated out bits, right. and uh, some seven of us were staying as bachelors in a flat in okay. uh, Bangalore. Okay. Uh, all bitsins, right? Uh, right uh, working for different companies, and right. then we used to take buses to go back home. I mean, every right. alternate yeah. weekend. Yeah. I'm from Hyderabad, and many of my flatmates are Telugu speaking. Mm. So either okay. Hyderabad or Vijayawada, we used to right. go uh, on weekends uh, to home. Okay. So every time for one odd years, when we went to a travel agent, we could get a, a ticket, mm. except for that Diwali 2005. Mm. So Diwali 2005, when we went to this travel agent to book a ticket. Yeah. So the modus operandi there is, you go to the agent, agent makes a phone call to the bus operator to find out if he has any seats, right? Uh, right? And the bus operator has a book of right. let's say 30 pages, each page is for one day of the month. Okay. And he would make like 30, 40 boxes in it, like yeah. horizontal mm-hmm. vertical lines, yeah. and each box is a seat, right? Right. So when somebody calls and says, I want a ticket for 15th, yeah. so you'd go to the 15th page yeah. and then see if any boxes are not stuck off. Right. right. If the boxes are not stuck off, then he'll say, okay, seat number five mm-hmm. is available and etc. Yeah. And the agent would get that information and then he would just strike off and write that agent's name, whoever took yeah. that seat. And that guy would write it on a piece of paper and give it to customer, collect money, and then later pass on the money to the bus operator. So that's yeah. how the ticketing was happening. Right. Right. So when I went to this agent, he called the bus operator to find out if there are any seats. Mm-hmm. That guy went to that date and then there's no seats available. Then he called the second operator that he also did probably the same, went to that seat, uh, no mm. seats. So, and then he called like four or five bus operators, none of them had seats. Right. And then this agent uh, told me that maybe there are no seats, maybe uh, that's the end of the thing. Just okay. when I was leaving his office, yeah. he told me maybe another agent could get me a seat. Okay. I was a uh, little incri- intrigued because yeah. uh, if he's an agent for bus operators, mm. uh, right, he should know whether or not there's any seat which is going vacant from Bangalore to Hyderabad. Right, right. Right. Why is he asking me to go to another agent? Yeah. Because that other agent is his competitor. Like right. nobody pushes a customer from them yeah. to another <laughs> competitor, right? right? He's asking you to go to another agent. So I went to this other agent. Mm. That agent also made like four or five phone calls. Right and he couldn't get a seat, Hmm. right? Then I went to the third agent. He also (laughs) made a few phone calls, couldn't get me a seat. And I ended up being in Bangalore uh, uh, for that long weekend. Uh, Now all of my flatmates had gone, so I was alone in the flat. So next day when I woke up, I was uh, a little guilty. Okay. Uh, because I knew that there were about 30 bus operators who were running buses from Bangalore to Hyderabad. Hmm. And even if these three, four operators called uh, like mutually exclusive hmm. uh, uh, bus operators, they would altogether call about 15 operators. Right? Right. So in the other 15 operators who were not called, if they had a seat vacant, right. that was a loss to me. Right. right, because yeah. I didn't go to the right agent who could call the right operator. Yeah, and it was a loss to these four or five agents because they didn't call the right operator. Right, because they didn't know who to call. Right, uh, right? and it was a loss to that bus operator because he would have burned the same amount of fuel, everything same, yeah. but gone one Obviously. seat less. Right. Uh, right, just because he didn't know which corner of the city there was a customer, <laughs> and we didn't know which corner of the city there was a bus operator who had a seat, right. and uh, even the agent didn't know. Yeah. Right, so looking at this, I mean, instant solution that came to my mind is okay why can't there be a website on which all the bus operators publish 
which buses they run and how many seats they have <laughs> uh, so that when i go to an agent that agent just logs on to that web page and sees okay which of the 30 operators have a seat and they just call that operator right, right? and if 30 operators don't have a seat yeah. this agent at least can feel uh, sure that there are yeah. no sure seats. that there are no seats right. At least huh. doesn't send a customer to his competitor, right? right? Yeah. So it helps everybody. It's a win-win-win. Customer right. wins because he at least gets a seat for sure. Gets huh. to go home. Or Highest least, probability of getting a seat. Or even at least if he doesn't get, he is uh, at least not feeling guilty that hmm. okay he hasn't tried enough, yeah. right? Yeah. The agents are uh, happy that they are not sending their <laughs> this thing, right? Yeah. Basavar is happy that okay he is getting distribution. Right. So it was a win-win-win, and I thought okay let's create the solution. So that's okay. how the journey of Red Bus started. Yeah. Uh, were you always entrepreneurial uh, had you started anything before because this is a company that was uh, started out of a need in the market for it yeah a, a need that you had personally yeah so is this the first time that you did something like this no I would say I mean yes I mean is this is the first time we did a company yes is okay. this the first time we built software yes yeah. uh, actually software uh, may not be uh, okay. right uh, true because we did the software in bits okay so okay. basically uh, basically I think this is the first time you created a solution the answer is no mm -hmm. I think it uh, I think uh, I, I think uh, I mean in my life and that's probably common with many other entrepreneurs is that uh, they are of the solution mindset when you see right. a problem they create a solution yeah like in bits uh, for example I was a, a cord of dopey Okay. Uh, I was the Oasis Quad of Dopey. So okay. in uh, when I became the Quad, that's the yeah. first time we computerized the whole thing. Okay. And before that, uh, we would again do it in paper and etc. Mm. and all. Then we changed that to computerization. Oh. So people would just input the room numbers and etc. Mm. And right. I don't know what's the process now. Yeah. But that's the first time that whole thing changed. Right. So that kind of entrepreneurial thing, right? I mean, thinking something new, yeah. better, Solutions. solutioning and, and etc. And actually following through. Yeah. Yeah. So I think if I think that's more an habit. I mean, if you don't, if if I didn't do that in my life, maybe I would not have done when I missed the bus. Right. Because a lot of times we face many problems, but yeah. not every time we think that yeah. we want to create a solution. You for went it, and right? took your solution and made it into something a it's solution happening. for hundreds of uh, thou hundreds millions. of thousands, of billions <laughs> of people. Exactly, millions of people. Yeah. And uh, today, Red Bus is in six countries. Wow. And uh, it's number one in many of the countries that it is in. It oh. is certainly Southeast number Asian one countries. in yeah. Southeast Asia and also in Peru, yeah. Latam. Yeah. And uh, it's the world's largest bus ticketing company. Hmm. Uh, yeah. It was bought by the IBO Group, I, uh, yeah, in group and then now it's merged with uh, Make My Trip. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, what was uh, was it hard to let that letting go period? When no, no. Actually, I think it's also. I mean, why would it be hard? I mean, why do you think it was hard? The because attachment. Yeah, it, it's like you had, it was like a baby that you created from, like you had grown this from nothing. Hmm. So I under, uh, I'm sure that you've, you've moved on. I can see that you've moved on to different challenges since then. So I'm sure that uh, you were always busy, but was it hard to let go of this chapter and move on to the next? No, not at all for us. Okay. Uh, right. I mean, we were seeing the brighter side of it. I mean, if we, uh, I mean, once we raised venture capital money, I mean, we knew that we had to give an exit. Exit mm -hmm. is like when you sell yeah, the company, yeah. VCs make money or you list the company, VCs make money, right? Yeah. So that was uh, inevitable. Okay. Whether you do it then or you do it after 10 years hmm. at a much bigger size, much bigger exit and etc. That was the only question. Like okay. when was the question rather than... So you knew that it was going in? I going think when you raise yeah. venture capital, I mean, more or less you do that, okay. uh, right? Because you need to give an exit to your investors. Right. So that that course was set but mm. when was the question right? right so when this opportunity came to us uh, there were various things running in our mind uh, right I mean various various reasons why we sold and etc mm. but I think as a summary of all that I mean we felt great about uh, taking that decision mm. because what happens is I mean when you sell you get a lot of money mm. uh, right that gives you freedom uh, and that freedom things. is so precious yeah. and at that age yeah. right I mean it's like by the time my friends are getting on to like working, <laughs> you have exited working, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the rest of your life is yeah. a holiday, yeah. right. right? I mean, you have yeah. money every, uh, I mean, every, I think every six months you go on an international holiday, <laughs> yeah. right? You don't have to wake up to work. <laughs> yeah. You can just wake up and yeah. read books okay. and yes. do anything, travel yeah. and etc. That's a yeah. great life, right? <laughs> I mean, what, I mean, 
so the we i mean we uh, i mean that's one of the reasons why we exited and the, yeah. the other thing is you can do the other things that you want to right. do in your life yeah when like you, let's address that yeah. um, so you've moved on <laughs> now you work with the government of telangana yeah. yeah as the chief investment officer innovation officer innovation, innovation my yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. as the chief innovation yeah. officer yeah so what exactly is it that you do to help startups or help new companies scale or grow their enterprises yeah so basically uh, as a chief innovation officer um, our charter is to foster the mindset of innovation in the citizens of the state mm-hmm. so what i mean by that is i mean i don't know if you were in the talk yesterday with uh, mr wangchuk so yeah. so yeah. wangchuk right so if you look at his story what is it i mean he's a great engineer right and uh, he went back to ladakh mm. and uh, he looked at the people there and then he started creating solutions for the people there right, right. like for example there was no water i think in summers mm-hmm. and then he created that fountain yeah. Yeah. which would create the artificial, artificial glaciers yes. and yeah. etc and now they're there almost in every village mm-hmm. it is solving their problems what is it doing in the course of solving that problem it is improving the quality of life of people there right, right? Of so when we innovate in cities and uh, etc right mm-hmm. we are often creating solutions for ourselves like red bus i faced a problem so we solved it right. mm-hmm. and what happened as a result of red bus the quality mm-hmm. of life for us has improved mm-hmm. right but unfortunately red bus has probably not improved the quality of life for people in remote places of course right right because they don't travel by these long distance mm-hmm. air condition buses or yeah. use internet so for them it was irrelevant yes. so while our innovations were improving quality of life for us and making us better faster easier life it was not doing the same for the others so that parity disparity was increasing mm-hmm. right so what we need to do is we have to one thing is get more like sonam wangchuks into their life so that their quality of life changes or the alternate way of doing that is you get them yeah, to quality. innovate oh, okay you uh, like uh, light up the fire of innovation in them mm-hmm. right? right you give them the tools to innovate you give them the means to innovate and you get people from there to innovate their quality of life will change rapidly and for better right right so that is the solution that we are working on uh, okay. at government of telangana so okay. what we do is we are saying okay the innovation is happening in large companies innovation is happening in small startups mm-hmm. right but all of them put together is probably like maybe 1% or 2% of the population right mm. right the masses it's not happening mm. so how can we go and uh get uh, i mean get them to think of being an innovator yeah. right and before that we need to check is innovation possible only by these phd's <laughs> and uh, engineers and uh, well educated people or can right. others also innovate right we have great examples of others innovating of like course. the movie padman right that right. and if you look at mr arnachalam i mean he's uh, not even an engineer he didn't he is not like any one of us right. right but still he invented something which changed the lives of the people there right, right. and such stories are there in every district like in telangana we have uh, mr malesham he is invented now there's a movie on him so he's invented a uh, power loom machine which went okay. on to change the whole uh, industry Right. and he is only a 6th grade government school ch- uh, student oh, okay. right he but he he d- built a machine yeah. for which <laughs> there are uh, mechanical engineering that was required electronics engineering that is required electrical engineering that is required <laughs> like 3 4 engineering right. only then you can make a machine and he did it all by himself right yeah. so there are such fantastic inspiring stories yeah. which say that it is possible for anybody to invent and innovate mm. right. Uh, right so now we are taking those examples taking inspiration from them and then seeing how do we get others to think of being an innovator okay. so that's our job so not so much about startups because there right. are other departments mm-hmm. in our government like t hub and t works mm-hmm. and v hub and etc okay. which work for uh, startups right. whereas we work for a different slightly different cause just inspiring yeah. people or uh, inviting them to think differently and come up with solutions yeah Okay. Yeah, yeah, it uh, sounds simple, but it's very. <laughs> no, very I, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure going yeah. down to the grassroots. <laughs> yeah. No, the challenge there yeah. is, like, it's how do you get people to do something that you want them to do? <laughs> That's okay. right. I mean, yeah. Swachh Bharat, right? Yeah. How do you get people to just not throw litter on the roads? That's true. Right? If it is only a wish away, it is. Yeah. I mean, the life would be so much yeah. different, yeah. right? So. 
sir we also don't know the solution yeah. you have to try and change people's mindsets from like a grassroots level yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. and uh, that's the challenge yeah. that we are facing and but it's very exciting and interesting so we are also figuring out has there been a precedence of such thing where government okay. says okay let's do this and then everybody follows mm-hmm. that right. right has there been a success yeah. right and if there is success what went into making that possible and then now we are it's a completely different kind of a research and figuring out <laughs> solutions than what we did at red bus of course so we are on that it's a new now. challenge yeah yeah <laughs> is there like a formula that you'll follow every time you'll approach such a problem so right now see i, I think we just put together our own hypothesis and we are okay. testing out that hypothesis right now okay uh, so the hypothesis is like when we started red bus i mean you mentioned how was the life when we started red bus yeah. right so when we started red bus the life was very different right okay uh, wherever conferences that i went to uh, like people used to ask me like how do you convince your parents hmm. to leave this cushy job and get into entrepreneurship right, right? Yeah. today nobody asks that question Right. Yeah. I mean, in the conference, so many people were yeah. entrepreneurs. Right. Yeah. So many questions were asked, yeah. but not a single question was that. Right. The world has completely changed in ten years. Right? right. Where now, people ask you if you don't be a, if you uh, if you're not thinking of being an entrepreneur. Right. Nobody asks how do you convince your parents because right. parents ask you. Right. Like yeah. why are you not uh, trying yeah. out? Yeah. Right. How did that change? Hmm. How did that whole thing turn around in ten years? Yeah. Right. So we looked at that thing and said, okay, how did it change? So we asked this question. We asked this several times. We created a hypothesis. So our hypothesis is, see, that changed because uh, at any point in time, ten years ago, twenty years ago, five years ago, at any point in time, right? Uh, there were some students who were coming out and trying to be entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. But what has happened in the last ten years is the success of those students has become much bigger. so that it inspires like there is flipkart there is ola there is swiggy red bus right there red is a <laughs> red, red bus, bus yeah exactly. yeah so yeah. Then, then and it becomes such big success newspapers keep writing about it mm. you yeah. can't read a newspaper any day without reading a story of a startup we so make these guys heroes yeah hmm. exactly yeah. so you make them heroes and then uh, and then they are people like you hmm. yeah. if people like you are going and doing that then you will feel why can't i do right right if harsha can do why can't i do i am from of the course. same college i am the same thing why can't i do right yeah. so first you there are always those people you take them and make their success so big hmm. that it gets celebrated hmm. and then you get media to write about it and then uh, yeah. right uh, there are stories and then with these stories right what happens is a lot of confidence is built in people mm-hmm. like just reading one story about let's say swiggy won't help Hmm. So you'll read a story about Swiggy, then two three days later you'll get another story about Swiggy. Uh, so how difficult it was. Right, this right. that you read twenty stories about Swiggy, yeah. then you know the nitty gritty is of starting a company. Yeah. Then your confidence to start a company goes up because you yeah. now like I have a holistic picture. I have a big right. picture. Right. right? Yeah. So you need to read so many stories about that, and that will happen when media keeps writing about that. Right. Okay. And uh, so you take uh, those people, make their success very big, yeah. get media to write about it, so that people day in and day out keep. reading it yeah. and the course of reading it they built their confidence and expertise so that they can enough confidence to try it out yeah. uh, right and then that person who is successful the hero has to be a people like me yeah <laughs> right only then it will inspire so we are applying the same formula for the masses yeah. so what we are doing there is we are saying okay let's find out amongst them yeah. people like malaysham garu Okay. who is not an engineer who has just gone to a government school studied in telugu medium yeah. and has tried to invent something yeah. let's take them yeah. and let's make his success very big okay. and let's get media let's get a movie done mm-hmm. on him let's get some songs done on him let media mm. write about it so that people know the stories in and out every day mm. right and then he ha- he has to be a person that they can relate to so there's okay. no excuse for them not to invent Right. right so we are doing exactly the same thing i mean that's our hypothesis and that hypothesis we are right now working on okay. so we went and identified like 5 600 such innovators mm-hmm. yeah. in 33 districts of telangana which means every okay. district of telangana there are 20 such innovators okay. i mean initially we thought oh there there are not so many but mm. there were 5 600 such innovators in a small state like uh-huh. telangana yeah right so so that's that's what we are trying to do there and we are confident that if that is the formula yeah we have not yet we don't yet know if that is a formula but if yeah. that is a formula yeah. that in 10 years from now we will have a like a 
complete state coming in yes. working together everybody is solving their problems right. and in the Innovative. post their quality of life is going up right. and then when you have an innovation what happens is your economy builds up mm-hmm. right. right i mean let's say you are a manufacturer of this chair yeah. right so you are manufacturing let's say in goa right and uh, to manufacture this let's say you bought a machine from germany and then put in this raw material mm-hmm. which is plastic and then print this chair out right let's say in a neighboring state there's another manufacturer of the chair so he's also bought the same uh, german machine right. and he's also putting the same plastic in getting on the same chair yeah. so when that uh, person in that state wants to buy a chair will he come to goa to buy or will he buy it in that state hmm. he'll just buy it in that state right. Uh, right because it's the same and it yeah. might be cheaper without transportation right hmm. but let's say the person in uh, in goa uh, is saying okay why do i do the same thing can i just change it yeah. instead of putting the same black plastic in it can i put a mixed color plastic mm-hmm. so the chair that comes out is very colorful mm. it's like a mixed colors or there's a pattern or there's a flower design or something mm. like that right? right and then it becomes a unique chair right and then the person the customer in the neighboring state if he wants this colorful chair yeah. he has to come to goa and of buy course. it right when he buys it in goa the goa's economy goes up Right. right instead of one chair getting sold here one chair getting sold there two chairs getting sold here which means more right. income here more jobs more this mm. thing more prosperity mm-hmm. that's the power of innovation yeah. right when we as india our population invents create something unique which is not there in any other country in the world mm. the whole world comes here shopping right. right right and then all their spend comes here your economy goes up of course and it has to be in our culture mm. i mean not just Uh, that they will benefit but the whole country benefits because of their inventions and it will form a chain reaction of even more people getting inspired absolutely because All now it will be distilled right. how to be an innovator hmm. uh kya karna chahiye yeah. that thing will be like yeah. available to everybody yeah uh, right another example i'll tell you okay ha huh? so if you look at uh, telugu speaking states uh, both uh, telangana and andhra right yeah. So we have the most number of people in the US. So if yeah. you go to the US, yeah. right, pick up a Indian. Yeah. There's a 60% chance oh. that he will be a Telugu speaking guy. <laughs> okay. Right? Wow. Why is it like that? Mm. Right? Telugu speaking people are only 6% of India's population. <laughs> right. Why is that in India it is 60%? I mean yeah. 10 times more than their fair share. Right. Why is that? Yeah. Is there something different in the land there in the air there in the yeah. food that they eat nothing different from there to maharashtra to orissa to anywhere right yeah. why is it so different yeah it's so different because i am from a telugu speaking state and i am uh, uh, from a telugu speaking family right so as a child when i was in 6th grade 7th grade right i knew how to go to the us <laughs> how do you apply for a visa mm. before i knew where was delhi i know where <laughs> is detroit mm. right i have a cousin in detroit i don't have a right. cousin in delhi but i have in right. detroit right so that whole knowledge right i mean uh, is just a dining table conversation yeah right why should be there more businessmen in gujarat yeah right wo uh, dining table mein discuss hota hai i mean it's not difficult different for you to do a business right. why is in punjab such i mean every state has something right yeah. so like that telugu states have this us ka thing many mm. people go there so which means it is possible once you make that information available to everybody the yeah. whole culture i mean changes right. because that information is available and then the success story is there you build confidence of doing that and etc just like what has happened in entrepreneurship in india mm. we could also do this in the other sections of the society of course uh, on that note i want to ask you uh, a two part question first of all i understand that you are an angel investor huh. in some companies uh, firstly what do you look for when you are investing in a startup or when you are even uh, partnering with them or teaching them if, when you decide to mentor them for example what first what are the things that you look for and secondly what do you think of india as an environment for startups today yeah i mean it's a great environment for startups uh, okay. today it'll only get better and better and better mm-hmm. right right and the faster we get better at it the better it is for our country right so <laughs> being an angel investor i mean that's a uh, I think a multi-billion dollar question, okay. right? If yeah. only I knew it, <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> I can yeah. become a billionaire sitting here, right? Yeah. I mean, I can just look at a startup and decide whether to invest or yeah. not. So that's difficult. No, but as of right now, what are a few things that uh, encourage you to? What would stand out in yeah. a person? 
Yeah, so uh, several things. I think uh, the problem that they're trying to solve, mm -hmm. uh, is it relevant? Mm -hmm. Is it uh, new, uh, okay. right? If it has already been tried. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you invest, do you invest in people or in ideas? Like, for example, if somebody had a not so good idea, but you saw something in that person, would you still invest in them for the sake of like future ideas that they might come up with? Like, what is it people or ideas? Which comes first when you're investing? Uh, absolutely, for me, it's people. Okay. It's people because, see, if you look at uh, the unicorns of India, hmm. yeah. right? I mean, we heard Harsha's story this morning. Yeah. Uh, so if you look at it, it was not their first idea. It's then. not their first exactly. idea. They tried something very different, yeah. right? That didn't work out, yeah. right? And it is the second idea that worked, right? right? If you look at Ola, yeah. they were actually intercity travel cab. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like if I want to go to Hubli yeah. from here, right? I call them up and then they give me an intercity. They were never intercity. Yeah. That that I mean, if they were doing only that, they would not be what they are today. Right. It's the second idea that successful. Mm -hmm. Look at Paytm. There was something else, yeah. right? It's the second idea that. Uh, right. So I mean, there are like all these big companies, right? Yeah. I mean, even you look at Lenskart, which become a unicorn now, yeah. right? I mean, their story is completely different. Right. They were a software services company. Right. So everywhere I've seen, I mean, it's not like a must that you must be what yeah. but uh, it uh, this shows us that it is a people right. right what they're doing now maybe matters maybe it doesn't matter but their ability to find out opportunities and jump in that opportunities and once they are in the right opportunity their ability to make the most out of it yeah. ability to scale operations ability to attract mm -hmm. talent ability to take the right decisions most of the times like Harsha was saying this right. morning so all these things matter and all these things are people skills I mean people dependent right. rather than other things right? right so for me it is definitely people i mean okay. and i'm well, very biased like uh, i'm giving yeah. more examples of yeah. that yeah. than uh, yeah. the otherwise uh. so in your opinion for a person who maybe has an idea what should he do or what steps should he check and what what what, his, what would his checklist be like if he should be sure that this is something that would go through if this is something worth his time or should he just ditch it when it's an early stage idea or should he actually follow through with it and spend some time on it? So basically, I mean, there are certain things that uh, I've noticed uh, are probably like uh, uh, are more or less uh, uh, very important. Like one of the things that I would say is uh, you asked me a question about uh, um, when he's unsure right. whether he should pursue it or he should drop it. Right. right. So there are many questions like this that uh, an entrepreneur will encounter, mm. right? Should he be single-mindedly be focused on something or should he pivot, mm. right? If he say he should pivot, mm. then uh, whenever something gets difficult, the people will just pivot and then they'll reach nowhere, right? Yeah. But if he said don't pivot, yeah. then we will not have Swiggy today, we will <laughs> not have Ola today, we will not have all that, right? Yeah. So likewise, I think every decision that you take, mm. right, uh, there will be... The, this thing true and the quite opposite of that will also be true mm. there are enough case studies of both it's right. like the uh, goldilocks principle right i mean you would have all read this uh, uh, story yeah. uh, as a child right yeah. so these bears and then they eat this yeah. hot food and yeah. a cold food yeah. then they learn that it's neither the hot food or not the cold food yeah. it is just the right temperature right. that gives you pleasure right, right. so you know all these things what uh, i have come to uh, start believing yeah. is that it's neither this nor that yeah. it's actually having both of them together yeah. right it's uh, balancing those things mm -hmm. out right. is what will uh, give you that great success and having that mind and where you balance out like when will you be like a uh, conservative or when will you be like ultra flexible uh, huh? when where do you draw that line is your art of leadership is your art of decision making and I think that is what makes all the difference, uh, right? Well, this morning also, like, I think uh, when somebody asked uh, Harsha, like, uh, is it gut feeling or is it right. data driven? Right. right. He said, actually, you know, uh, the way he answered is actually both. Right. Right. I mean, it needs gut feeling at yeah. some situations. It needs data at some situations. Right. So most of those questions are, ans the answers are like that. Hmm. Right. So, and once you think that the answers are like that, I mean, your confidence to take a decision will go up extremely up. 
Hmm. which will be very very helpful to for you to make those decisions hmm. otherwise you'll always be in dilemma oh should i do this or should i do that or should i have done that that dilemma will kill you and hurt you more than actually taking a decision and feeling good about it right right and it is always that don't stick to any of these extremes uh, you be in the center and uh, it helps you make right decisions uh, also it'll give you peace and happiness Uh okay we'll uh, end this now but uh, but just before we close if you could tell give some advice to college students people in bits and in any college if you had some advice for yourself back in college what would that be yeah so basically what i would say is uh uh, uh see uh, i think uh, there are these thousands and thousands of good habits okay. that are there mm. uh right so the more of those good habits we have the more is our ability to make an impact to run an organization mm. to do a startup to be a better uh, family member mm. to lead a better life mm. right so what are these good habits good habit let's say is you don't get stressed right right stress free life right right you you don't have any animosity Right. you don't have any bad feelings okay or you can focus very well mm-hmm. right or you can get that good sleep or there are so many of those things right yeah. thousands and thousands of those yeah right the more of those you have the better you will be at anything that you want to do yeah so what i would say is it's more than you knowing that science and technology or you knowing that formulas and etc and all that i think what will define your life will be these things hmm. so what i would say is uh you take one of those every quarter or every one month and practice it for 30 days so that it becomes a habit okay and you just have to keep on making them your second nature right uh, right and you get on to that i think you will be very very capable Uh, not just to run companies to but just ju- just to lead a happy life hmm. right i mean if you don't get stressed at all yeah. right uh, i mean that's like a coolest of the <laughs> lives right i mean yeah. whether you have money don't have money doesn't <laughs> yeah. matter yeah. right but to have that positive mindset right right so i would say that hmm. uh, right and all these things uh, you get into that habit of picking up something making a habit in 30 days yeah. go hmm. on to the second one go into the right. second one there is there are unlimited supply of those yeah. and the more you do the better it will be for you thank you so That's much great. thank you really all the best yeah, yeah. thank you bye, bye. thank you